So hello everyone. My name is Mateus. I'm a senior software engineer at Red Hat. Time is of the essence. So I'll be able to address any Q and A by. The Feel free to reach out to me afterwards. I'll be happy to answer questions. And today I'm going to show you some ways you can manage technical debt in your teams and projects. So technical debt is akin to broken windows in a building. If you leave a visible broken window and a repair other things will eventually be broken, leading up to misdemeanors, disorderly conduct, and general disarray. This criminal slippery slope is the broken windows theory, and it's an actual thing in criminology. The pragmatic programmer compares it with technical debt, telling us that a code base riddled with technical debt is a lot like a building with broken windows. But I personally feel like technical debt is a lot like doing house chores. Have you ever let dirty dishes stack? All it takes is a single day without dishwashing. Then, in the next day, you see that overwhelming pile of dirty dishes, glasses, silverware, and then you might feel tempted to just grab a clean one and have my next meal with it. And I'll wash the, the dirty ones later. And then, just like that, the stack will keep growing and growing and growing until you run out of dishes, until you run out of silver, silverware, until you run out of glasses, and either you wash them or you face starvation. So a very similar thing happens with, with code. It can all begin with a single unoptimized function that gets left behind, like this bubble sort here. Or even some dirt that could be refactored. But the main issue here is that bad code has gravity as it tends to attract even more bad code. And after a while, the application's code base becomes such a mess that simple changes can take weeks to be deployed. Who has been in that situation before? More people than I don't like to see, which is unfortunate, but it's the life of software engineering. And this impacted your quality of life, right? Who felt bad? Okay, uh, uh, but not only quality of engineering gets affected. The business itself gets impacted by that because you need to quickly deliver in order to achieve your business goals. A Gartner report tells us that actively managing technical debt leads to a 50% reduction in delivery time. So I guess we have plenty of good reasons to keep technical debt in, debt in check, right? So you might be wondering, how do we do it? We first need to define what technical debt is. And believe me or not, the semantics actually matter here. Some people argue against the term itself, citing that it can be deceiving. Some eccentrics even advocate that you should stick a banana peel to a tech debt ticket in order to force you to address it as soon as possible. The reasoning being that nobody wants a dirty working environment, right? But the important message here is that each team needs to define what constitutes technical debt for them. And the usual suspects are... How can I point this? Okay. Uh, no, usually non-blocker edge case and workaroundable bugs, code refactors, non-block infrastructure work, such as CI-CD improvements, database turning, or infrastructure turning, some optimization, and general low priority and non-urgent improvements. So nothing that's urgent, like one or two dirty dishes on, on the sink, but if they keep stacking, we will only hinder you on the, learn, on the long term. And also notice that all technical debt falls into two types, intentional and unintentional. Unintentional ones are usually related to bugs or can be related to oversight of original design, shortcomings in architecture. And intentional ones, however, have multiple causes, such as the need to meet a deadline or to quickly prototype something that can be optimized later. And this classification might help you or your organization to, uh, with your technical depth definition. But please, don't take this as a set of rules. This is also not a comprehensive guideline of what technical debt is. Think totally about your team's context, domain, and scope, and try to figure out what technical debt means for you. 
and different teams might require different definitions. We have now discussed the perils of technical debt and how to define it. So, how do we keep track of it? Your best bet is to use the same tooling the team already uses. So if you're using Jira, stick to Jira. If you use Trello, stick to, Jira, to Trello. If you use a physical Kanban board with six notes, keep doing that. No reason to reinvent a wheel here. However, it is good practice to regularly review the tech debt you have in your backlog. You should evaluate whether it still makes sense to deal with and drop anything that no longer makes sense. Seize the opportunity to refine whatever still needs to be solved, however. And now we explore the basics of technical debt tracking, definition, and why you should deal with it. But you're probably wondering now, how do we actually manage it and keep it in check? We have to approach this with both strategy and tactics. And while the tactics may vary, my experience shows me that there is all but one strategy to effectively, to effectively get technical debt under control. Can anybody guess it? You need to foster a culture of continuous improvement in your team. Everyone needs to be committed on improving the code base, not letting technical debt slip. Engineers love and clean well-maintained code base. Who here likes to, to code on, on, on good code, on a clean architecture, on clean code? Look how many hands are raised. So it's natural. And they will make the effort to keep the code clean. This is literally the broken windows theory. If your house is well maintained, you keep it well maintained. If a code base is well maintained, if it's clean, it has a clean architecture, engineers will strive and make efforts to keep it that way. And it pays itself compounded over time. And in order to achieve this, a team needs to be enabled and empowered. A team needs to really own their systems and services end to end and be proficient at their tools. And management buy-in is also critical. Even though there is a good strategy to handle technical debt, the actual tactics for dealing with it vary and depend on several factors such as team size, context, delivery process, sometimes even on the tech stack itself. So it really depends on how to actually do the, tactic, the tactics, but there are a few mainstream ones. Some teams go by the golden rule, which dictates that each sprint has 20% reserve capacity to address technical debt. And some teams even split 20% between actual bug fixing and other technical debt issues. This has a collateral benefit of, by default, creating the technical debt management habit in the team. Does anyone here follow a similar approach in their teams? Okay, a couple of people, it's nice. Other teams deal with technical debt as regular issues and has the team stack lead or or, 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 or architecture to act as their stakeholder or advocate and, adv and, make, and they advocate for, for the tech debt. And this can lead to some sprints having no technical debt in them, but other ones might be technical debt heavy. But again, this is no set of rules, just a couple of examples from the industry. My suggestion is for you to experiment with them and stick to whatever you feel it works. Also, it's worth noting that not all technical debt is bad. Sometimes it is okay to accept some technical debt, especially if you are resource pressured. And resource here can mean money, time, even manpower. Sometimes you might need to quickly hack an MVP in order to beat the competition and be the first to go to market. And sometimes you might need to accept a suboptimal infrastructure if you are operating under a constrained budget. In this case, technical debt might compare to actual financial debt. Think as those intentional debts as the equivalent on taking a loan to start a business. In other words, not all debt is bad by default. What really matters here is your ability to pay it back later. Keep that on your mind. But the main takeaway here is to not lose track of what really matters which is to embrace a continuous improvement culture and for the team to be the main advocate for excellence and quality in their own code base. But let's now explore a few cases and examples of technical debt being managed in practice. Let's first explore how to manage a legacy application's technical debt. You don't need to be a wizard to do that, by the way. 
It is an application that is already in production and therefore has concerns such as uptime, SLA, not introducing new bugs, and most importantly, not breaking production. Does anyone here maintain a legacy application? Yeah, good luck. <laughs> but also there are two sides of being a legacy application maintainer. It can be hard to change. Deployments might be complex. And overall, introducing new features or fixes to the application might be difficult. However, on the other hand, and this is a pretty much an upside of being a legacy application developer, you know what's going on. You know its shortcomings. You know that it might be missing automated tests. You know that its CI CD might be unoptimized, or it might have a couple of Megazord classes that you could break down into smaller classes. In other words, your technical depth is already mapped for you. For example, if this is a monolith that is hard to scale or it's hard to deploy, we might want to explore a strangler pattern and plan to break it down into more maintainable microservices. If it lacks automated testing, we can create a policy that any new code must always come with their unit tests. Also, file tickets to implement tests for classes or module that might, be, that might be missing them. We can even wrap it in container image, in a container image, so it becomes easier to deploy on public cloud, fully leveraging CI CD capabilities. All of those things are tactics and techniques, and while they still may vary, depend really on the legacy application, the overall strategy is still of implementing a continuous improvement culture on the team. This might be easier said than done, okay? I don't say it lightly, especially if the project has been neglected for a while. But start with some small steps and keep improving things until you get technical depth under control, or at least so that it doesn't runs, runs, runs wild. The upside is that those small but steady improvements eventually compound with each other, improving overall developer experience. And this will engage everyone to keep tackling technical depth and we continuously improve the code base. And my personal experience leads me to believe that a golden rule approach might work best for legacy applications because there are always going to be bugs, improvements that you need to address, and it's worth it to always account for that uh, in sprint capacity. But yet again, your mileage may vary and analyze what works best for you and your team, except critical thinking. But now what if my application is something completely new? You have then a great opportunity to get things right from the start. You begin with no previously existing technical depth and it's entirely up to you to get it right during the development cycle. There is a challenge in identifying it properly and documenting it so the team doesn't lose track. So don't forget to file the proper Jira tickets. And also, there's no excuse for you to not code unit tests, okay? It's new code. You should, be doing, you should be doing tests. Automated tests help you with regressions, refactors, and overall engineering mental health, so there's no excuse to not have them. But the actual main challenge here is to get management, sponsorship, and buy-in to properly deal with technical debt, especially when we might be in a situation where a hard deadline for a launch or first re release exists. What might help you here is to show that not getting technical depth under control on the short term might lead to some bigger technical issues in the future, which might hinder the overall product development. In this case, I strongly recommend to have the tech lead or project lead to act as technical depth advocate and argue them with the manager or stakeholders so that this can get prioritized at least for, let's say, the, po the first post MVP release. Yet again, the main challenge is to foster continuous improvement culture and to get it right from the start. Um, and those tips and examples here are to make you think about how you've been doing things to fight technical debt on your team and company. But this isn't a cookie cutter solution. So exert critical thinking and try to figure out what works best for you. My experiences lead me to believe that fostering a continuous improvement culture is the best bet, but there might be other solutions out there. But regardless of strategy or tactics, always remember that it takes a single broken window to wreck a building. Don't let your guard down. Fix your broken windows. Thank you.